on this computer. So I just want to make sure we are recording. We are. Okay, so welcome. Um, this is the third webinar uh, going through sort of the, the ins and outs of Skillblocks. And uh, Skillblocks launched three weeks ago. So this is literally week three of it even being in existence. And today's webinar, we're going to be focusing on uh, strategies for actually sharing Skillblocks, both the uh, Skillblocks as is as well as the resources within. And if you haven't been to the earlier webinars, don't worry, we'll do a very quick walkthrough of them. But where we've been so far, and where we have videos on our YouTube playlist, uh, excuse me, our YouTube channel for this, uh, week one, we did an introduction of skill blocks. And that was literally start to finish. This is how you create an account. This is how you find a skill. This is how you select resources that align to those skills. If you have publisher resources available that you want to see how they align to the skills, how to add those into your library. Um, so literally soup to nuts, everything you need to know about getting up and running in Skillblocks. And then last week's webinar, we went a little bit deeper into exploring the actual content, uh, the free and open education resources that are included within Skillblocks. So we built a Skillblock and then look at the different activities that are available from the free and open education resources within. Uh, and as we do this, I'm going to hide my video because I realized in these recordings that you, this little thumbnail just appears throughout. And since we're going to be showing some interesting tools today, I don't want that to block what you see. So today's webinar, we're going to dive a little deeper. So again, we know how to create a skill block and now we know what the resources are within skill blocks. And so today we're going to think a little bit more about how do we want to teach with skill blocks? How do we want to use skill blocks as is or the resources within to provide instruction to students, whether that be real time instruction virtually or whether those be activities that we're looking for students to do on their own. And so uh, first we're going to just make some considerations for what we're doing right now, teaching from a distance and the, the considerations that you have to make up front before making selections about what tools you want to use and what strategies you want to use. Then we're going to do a very quick overview of skill block and just walk through sort of everything that we've done up to this point, but in a very fast way. Again, those videos of those earlier two recordings are always available. And then we're going to consider uh, what are the things to think about in terms of how you want to use skill blocks. Uh, and then in doing so, we're going to look at the different ways you might uh, use skill blocks by exploring different tools, such as Wakelet and Padlet and Google Classroom and Remind uh, for sharing out these uh, resources with your learners. So we're going to be looking at a lot of different things. And the notion is not, <coughs> excuse me, um, oh, you're going to use all of these things as you're watching me do these um, and, and use these tools, think about is this a tool that would make sense for me in my current setting in terms of, you know, working virtually, but also thinking about in the future when we get back to the classroom, because the number one thing that I keep saying on every training I've been doing up to this point is all of these tools that you're learning how to use and strategies that you're learning because of the fact that we were, we're in this sort of forced virtual learning environment for however long. Uh, don't think of the things that you're learning right now as band-aids to fix and just do what you have to do right now. Think about how can I take these tools when I go back into the classroom so that I can be more effective as an instructor, so that I can be providing more options for my learners and we just have a richer experience. And so next week's uh, webinar actually is going to be looking at that. Um, in looking at a strategy called blended learning. And you may be familiar with that concept where you're blending um, both online and face-to-face -face instruction in a sequence that makes sense for learners based on a topic that you're teaching. So we're gonna, we're gonna dive a little deeper and you know, look at not just, okay, here are the tools you can use, but here's how you can sequence these activities in a virtual setting and in an in-person setting um, to be really building up your arsenal of great activities using technology um, in a way that makes sense for you, not just for right now, but also for when you get back into the classroom. 
I'm going to stop just to check chats. Hopefully, I think they're just all introductions. Um, if you have a question at any point, please feel free to ask it in the chat. <clears throat> I will be answering and stopping for questions throughout. So uh, in terms of resources, just for what has been covered up to this point, in the webinars, we on the Crowded Learning website have a skill blocks page. We'll look at that in a moment. That is where you can see sample skill blocks. That's where you can launch skill blocks. That's where you can see upcoming webinars. And we have a link also to our YouTube channel where we've created a skill blocks playlist. And that playlist has little three to five minute videos that show all of the how to's of getting up and running in skill blocks. And then also the recordings of uh, both last week's webinar, the first webinar, and uh, after today, this week's webinar. So all of those are always available to you. So in terms of today and what we're going to be looking at in terms of tools, uh, we're going to be using all of these in one way, shape, or form. Now, obviously, we're using Zoom right now. Uh, Zoom is a tool that allows you to hold sort of face-to-face -face conversations um, through video conference meetings, and many of you may already be using that. Google Classroom is something that you can use for assignment management. Uh, Remind is a tool right here that allows you to send out notifications to students. So that could be, hey, here's something I want you to do by X date, or that could be, hey, here's the link to our live Zoom tomorrow. Um, it, it's very flexible in terms of how you want to communicate with your learners. Google Sites, we won't probably have enough time to get into, but it is something that I'll show at some point over the next few weeks. Crowded Learning's website is built on Google Sites, and I keep saying I need to get into a more sophisticated website, but it is just so easy for, for anyone to use and to put up things. And so, you know, as you're thinking about what's my central location for putting everything that I want students to be accessing, um, Google Sites, if you're interested in creating a class website where you can put all your announcements, where you can put a weekly schedule, where you could put links to everything that you want students to be accessing, uh, it's a very, very easy to use tool. Uh, we'll be doing a live activity today and I'll be showing you how to create lessons using Padlet, which is a great tool for not only creating lessons, but ones that are collaborative where people can post and people can see each other's posts around a topic or an idea. And then Wakelet. Uh, you may have already opened the Wakelet that I shared, but Wakelet is a great tool for um, pulling things together into one place for learners or to creating really rich lessons that students can work through on their own. And that's what we're actually going to be doing with Wakelet today. But as you're thinking, oh, I forgot, uh, before we begin, I have a poll. So I want uh, the tools that I just sort of walked through, I'm interested in knowing uh, which one of these tools uh, have you tried or do you currently use with students? So <clears throat> you can select all that apply. There should be a poll that is on your screen right now. So please go ahead and indicate which tools, tool or tools, that you have tried or that you currently are using with students? Because this is just interesting for me to see um, what folks know about or, or have experience using. So we've only got eight folks that have uh, put in. I'm gonna wait about 10 more seconds. So which tools have you used uh, or uh, in the past or are you currently using with learners? All right, I am excited um, to introduce you to a couple tools that uh, you may not already use. So many of you uh, are, are currently or have used Zoom and Remind. So uh, we're, I think everyone's upfront sort of first thing to do was like, how are we going to establish or continue communication with our learners? How am I gonna provide real-time instruction? And so obviously Zoom um, does that portion, the real-time instruction. And Remind, as I said, is a great tool. Sorry, I forgot to share these with you. So these are the results in terms of what you um, selected. So great, uh, only one of you has used or uh, um, uses Wakelet, so that's great. And only two of you use Padlet. So those are the two activities that we're actually gonna create today. So I'm excited to share those with you. But in terms of thinking about these tools, um, 
you first have to establish a communication plan. And again, based on sort of the responses, it seems like at this point now, we're probably about three weeks in or more of you uh, now teaching remotely or virtually, uh, obviously establishing that communication upfront. And what is the sort of regular sequence of communication so that everyone sort of knows when things are happening on a, on a regular basis? That's sort of step one. Two is considering the resources you use. And there are lots of things that you need to think about in terms of access, in terms of user digital skills, in terms of your own digital skills and comfort levels, and just not wanting to overwhelm both yourself or your learners. And so when I share these tools today, uh, think about, again, not I have to learn how to use every single one of these, but think about, oh, that would be a great tool for me to start using with my learners because it's going to help solve specific, excuse me, specific problems that I might have in terms of getting everyone on the same page or running a, a real coordinated lesson where students can uh, collaborate and communicate with me in real time. Uh, and then the third thing, again, is looking at how am I going to share these uh, assignments? How am I going to share these resources that I want students to have available? And in terms of communication, obviously, um, you've had to think about what are your goals for communication? and what tools are your students uh, and you already using. So, you know, Remind is popular because we know that students don't tend to like email. Um, and we know just in general, people are more responsive when they get sort of a notification by way of a text, which is the way Remind works on a mobile device, um, as opposed to going and checking your email. And then the other big thing that you need to think about with both communication and these learning resources is how, how real time do we have to be in terms of instruction and what do I wanna do with instruction? So there are certain resources within skill blocks that students can work on on their own. Those are things that you can set in motion as assignments and say, here's a start date, here's a due date. Um, when you're looking at sort of your face-to-face -face time with students, you know, we need to start thinking about rather than putting a PDF on screen that we're going to read through and talk about, what are ways that we can really be diving in and particularly with math into concepts. Um, you, you, you probably may have taught, you know, a group of students eight to 10 to 12 hours a week before, and now you're probably down to two or three hours a week, if that, that's really real time face to face. Um, in something like Zoom. So we really need to be mindful about how are we gonna maximize that time. And in thinking about that, you also need to think about uh, student you know, bandwidth. So uh, certain things like a Zoom, those are high intensity in terms of how much bandwidth they take and students who may be mobile dependent for internet access. And within that, they may have limited data plans. Um, we need to sort of limit how much Zooming we're doing or how much instruction is happening solely by that way. Um, and then again, in terms of how frequently or infrequently are you touching base with students, um, think about things like Padlet, which we'll share today, and Remind, if you wanna use Remind as a text chain to have, have a conversation around a concept, those are sort of real-time things that you need to be monitoring. However, um, you know, things like a Khan Academy video and then the follow-up um, practice set that they do, you know, that's something that students can be doing on their own. You know, don't use a Zoom hour that you have or 40 minutes if you're, if you're limiting yourself to the free account. Um, you know, don't use that to have students working independently and not, you know, and not really maximizing that time. And then in terms of the learning resources that we, I've been sharing both for uh, skill blocks and elsewise, Think about which things learners can work on on their own. That's what I mean here by full learner agency. So all of these tools um, are things that, really there doesn't need to be much teacher involvement other than making the student aware that these resources exist. These are things that students can work through on their own. The only one that requires an account is USA Learns and students can actually create their own accounts. It does not require a teacher. But all of these are things that learners can explore on their own time. And so maybe you set a goal or have students set goals for, uh, you know, number of hours or, you know, a concept they want to learn about this week and give them some agency in terms of using a tool that's going to help them do that and then have some sort of just weekly report or exit ticket 
that students say, this is the resource I used, this is how much time I spent in it, and these are some of the things I learned. Um, you're providing them with a little bit more freedom because of the fact that, again, you just don't have them in that seat right now. And so you need to be sort of mindful of that. And everyone has sort of recalibrated priorities right now. Um, and learning might not be the number one priority for, for many of your learners. Um, these two tools in the bottom left <coughs> are ones that are uh, great for, again, um, low teacher involvement in terms of all you need to do is get the students set up. But they're a little bit limited in terms of learner agency. EdReady, if you have um, intermediate or uh, adult secondary education students, high school level, uh, or excuse me, GED level students, um, EdReady is a great tool for math. Uh, it is adaptive in terms of students take an intake assessment and they get a learning plan and then they work through and it actually it's free and it uses free and open education resources. Um, but there's limited learner agency in terms of the fact that the learner gets a plan that is set. Uh, if you're a reading teacher, Read Theory is also a great tool because Read Theory, again, students take an intake assessment at the start, it levels them based on their lexile, and then they, they work through as many readings as they want, and there's great reporting in Read Theory aligned to the college and career readiness standards. So, as students are, are reading uh, passages and answering questions, uh, their reports are reflecting how, um, how they're performing based on the three domains within reading. So it's a really great tool. These on the top right, three of which are within skill blocks, Common Lit obviously is not a math resource. Uh, these are all, again, students do have the ability to work through in any way, shape, or form that they want. However, it's a little challenging for a student if they don't know math concepts to know where to go within, say, Khan Academy. And we have heard as crowded learning over the past two years when we ask teachers, what are you using? What free and open education resources are you using with your learners? Khan Academy has been the number one nearly every single time. So we know it's widely used, but one of the challenges that we hear from instructors in using Khan Academy is my learners do not know where to go. And so that's why it's on the right hand side of the spectrum in terms of there is a higher level of involvement for you because you need to let students know where to go. Whoops, I accidentally clicked and that's going to take me into that site. And then finally over here, sorry, I'm going to just escape out and click back in. On the bottom right is ReadWorks, which uh, is sort of limited learner agency and high instructor involvement. So this is a resource, and there's others like this, where uh, the student does not have any opportunity to self-select, and anything that the learner sees uh, has to be assigned by an instructor. So this, again, is just in thinking about both skill blocks and the math resources, but other subjects you may teach. Um, what is my level of necessary involvement in order for students to be using this? Um, and what is the learner's ability to sort of, you know, learn on their own because they just might not be able to commit to any sort of semblance of a schedule right now. On the Crowded Learning website, we have a couple of resources to help you think through these processes. So we have a teacher tools page that provides communication tools, provides uh, supplemental learning content, course-based learning platforms. Um, sharing tools, content management tools, and learning management tools. So basically the ones that we know are really well liked within adult education. We've sort of stood this page up in response to what's going on right now. We've also on that page, we have a link to an implementation plan template. And this is sort of a, sort of a graphic organizer slash planning tool for you to think about um, how am I going to communicate? What learning resources am I going to use? How am I going to manage and track students' progress? And, and answering questions that will help you think about how you're going to do that and what tools you might want to use. Okay, so now we're going to do a quick skill blocks overview. So if you've not been, and I need to log out of this little account here. Um, if you have not been to any of our earlier webinars, um, again, we will. Th those videos are available to you. But I have already created an account. I've actually created multiple accounts. So I am going to um, use a different one and I'm going to log in. <clears throat> now, when I log into Skillblocks, this is what I see on my dashboard. And so we are going to add a skill block. And the skill block that I am going to focus on today 
is from CCRS level B or TAB level E, uh, and that is equivalent fractions. But just a quick review of what you're seeing here. This is where you find skills in terms of the skill that you want to teach or provide resources for learners. And then over here is where you select learning activities. There's nothing here because I haven't selected anything. In terms of these levels that show up, these are the college and career readiness standard levels for adult education. So these span from grade level equivalency uh, kindergarten all the way to 12. Uh, right now, even though this looks like a pull down menu, it's just the standards. We are, are going to be loading in the TAB skills so that uh, soon you'll be able to toggle to TAB 11, 12. And instead of seeing A, B, C, D, E, you would see the TAB levels, which are L, E, M, D, and A. Um, we're gonna go to B, which is TAB level E, and I'm going to go to number and operations fractions. And so you'll just see on this left-hand side, these are the five domains at this level. And then when you click on them, it expands to the subdomains. Um, and when you click on any of those, that's when you're going to see learning activities in here. Now, again, I've thought through what I want to share today. So here we are. I am on this skill, develop understanding as fractions of numbers. And on the right hand side now, I see all of these resources. There's a total of 30 that align to the standards that are in this subdomain. And so I can scroll through and see Khan Academy resources, I see Math is Fun resources, and I see um, some FET resources. And we'll, we'll look at what each of these resources is um, within. And you'll also see there's multiple standards. So within a subdomain, there might be more than one standard. So if I click on these little uh, boxes, I will see what the standard is and see what the wording is of that standard. So this one is looking at understanding a fraction and representing it on a number line. Uh, 3NF3 focuses on equivalence. And so I am going to be grabbing resources that have that standard because that's the one that I wanna build this skill block around. So Khan Academy, these are obviously, um, these are practice sets. Um, so I am going to focus on uh, equivalency and, and not comparing right now just because I want to limit the number of resources. Um, so we'll just do these two practice sets and yeah, we'll just do those two practice sets for now. Math is Fun is a site that has lessons and games and other things. And so we see that there's a couple of comparing fraction lessons. Here's an equivalent fraction lesson with video. I'm going to grab that. Uh, this fraction number line is a great interactive that I'm going to use. Um, and uh, we'll do a basic fractions lesson as well. And now I'll also grab a couple of the games um, from Math is Fun. So we're going to grab Match the Fraction and there's lots of pizza going on here. Uh, do, 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 we'll do um, both of these because they're focused specifically on that standard. I could literally create a skill block that is just games on this concept, right? And then I would share that skill block with students and, and say, there's a bunch of games here that you could use to uh, practice your understanding of equivalent fractions. Um, but we're gonna build out a skill block that actually pulls together um, resources so that it could be something we share as is or we could even build a lesson out of it. So FET has a number of great simulations on fraction concepts. Um, we are going to grab fraction equality and we are going to grab fraction matcher uh, for our purposes for today. And so you'll see that I've selected 10 resources and now I'm going to click save. And now I have this listing of those resources. And by the way, the order that they sort of get listed is simply by the source. So Khan Academy is K, Math is Fun is M, Fed is P. So it's alphabetical order based on um, the, the creator of the resources. So I'm gonna give my skill blocks a name and I'm gonna call it level E, um, equivalent fractions. Um, and last week during the webinar, we talked about thinking through what is the sensible sequence of activities if you were going to share a skill block as is with students. Now I'm zooming out because it just makes it easier for me to drag things. But I personally, as a math instructor, 
I like to have sort of exploratory simulation type things up front. That is a great tool for face-to-face -face communication, albeit virtual, where you know you can be showing a simulation, you can be asking questions of your students in terms of what should I do next, or what do you think will happen if I do X, Y, or Z, and they can be communicating through chat or whatever um, tool is available to them to share their uh, thought or their answer related to what you're doing. And we'll, we'll, I'll do that in a second with one of these FET um, simulations. And then I also know within the Math is Fun resources that I grabbed that this number line, we're actually gonna build an activity uh, using Padlet and this interactive number line. And by the way, once I'm here, I have the ability to click on any of these resources and then see them. So this is a great interactive where students can sort of hover over and start seeing, okay, one half equals one fourth, excuse me, one fourth equals two eighths equals three twelfths equals four sixteenths. So we can start looking at things like simplifying fractions and factoring and why are these equivalent? Um, and, and doing lots of things of understanding what these means. These, these are all the same length. Uh, they're all one whole, but they're broken up into different amounts. I think I see a question. Oh, okay, great resources. Awesome, I'm glad you like them. Um, so I'm gonna move that number line I already did up front. I know these Khan Academy sets are practice sets, so I'm gonna move those to the bottom. And the thing about Khan Academy is you could use it as your sort of summative or formative assessment checks within, uh, or you might use it up front and say, hey, try this uh, practice set. If you don't know how to do these, then you might want to work through some of the resources in this skill block. So now I've got my basic fractions lesson. I'm going to make that first. Mind you, you would want to look at these to see what they actually entail. Um, but now I've organize this basically into we have three interactives, three sort of things that students can play and explore with concepts. We have two lessons in here. I could have added more, but um, we've got two because we're going to put some more in, in a second. We have three games and then we have two practice sets, right? So I've put them in a sequence that makes sense in a lesson format um, and, and that provide uh, the ability for learners to sort of work through them in a different order. Now, mind you, they're not, they're not seeing any guidance on those. So this is where you come in and need to provide instructions. I do wanna share how you would share a skill block with students. So I'm gonna log out here real quick. Um, I am actually in the chat going to post um, the link to skill blocks. And then here is the code that you would enter now I'm gonna paste that in here. There are no student accounts in skill blocks. All I need to do is paste this in. And now this is what the student sees. Um, it is this listing of all of these resources. Uh, it is all of these resources are mobile friendly. Um, so students would be able to access them very easily. Now the one other thing that I forgot to show is to add uh, print resources. So you may be working um, and I think this is important for two reasons. One, when we get back to normal, you're gonna to wanna to add resources to your library that um, you have available in class, right? So I'm going to just go to Tabe Tutor because I know that that is a popular product from Paxson that's aligned to Tabe, and I'm gonna add that. And then I am also going to add a new resource. I'm going to add Score Boost. I know that's a popular series from um, New Readers Press, and I want Tab Level E, so I'm going to add the three Tab Level E titles. I'm going to save those. So now I'm, I'm building out the library of resources that I have available to me. These are not that you don't magically get access to these books by adding them. You're indicating that these are books that I have. So nothing happens in here because I've only added to this skill block. Uh, the free and open resources, but I can now select learning activities and now I could use this pull down to see, okay, I added a New Reader's Press book. Oh, there are a number of lessons uh, that provide uh, instruction on this concept. I'm just gonna select one for the sake of time. Um, and then I could click on this to Paxson and see, again, there's a number of lessons that align to this skill. So I can click on that, click save, and now those appear at the bottom, and the reason for that is so they don't interrupt the order. 
Now, obviously, your students may probably don't have access to these right now. However, think about the fact that if you have learners right now who have no access to internet or very limited, you could create a skill block on equivalent fractions that just has the print resources and make those available to students and then set a time maybe, because uh, I know that a lot of folks uh, or organizations are sending packets of, of resources home with students. You could literally create, uh, either send students home with books and have a uh, coordinated time for them to pick them up and create print only learning plans for them on things that they need to work on. Um, or you could incorporate it into here. Now, you know, one of the use cases that we know is going to be popular with skill blocks is that teachers might want up front uh, these lessons from these books because that's the core of their curriculum. And then maybe the rest of the things are options. So uh, I'm going to do the reverse right now. I'm going to deselect these, which just means that when a student sees this list, they don't have a star next to them, um, you know, they're like that. So you might use that, that star uh, icon to say, these are the required resources. And then, you know, anything that doesn't have the star, these are the things that aren't uh, required. So now we've created our skill block. And now I wanna hop back into, um, into the presentation because we're gonna think about how do we wanna share this. So uh, again, the Wakelet, all of those resources that we saw, Math is Fun, obviously Khan Academy, um, and FET uh, on that wakelet that I created, those are all in there as well as the other things that are in skill blocks. So we've just created this learning plan, um, if you will. And that's only if you want to use it as a learning plan. For some of you, you might just wanna find the things that you see and know aligned to these skills. And then this is your curriculum reference tool, right? Anytime you have a skill, you can go to skill blocks, you can see what aligns and then you can go, okay, I'm gonna use this in whatever way you, you normally sort of sequence activities or build out your curriculum. Or as I shared in the chat, you could share skill blocks as is, meaning you're just telling students, go to skillblocks.org, here's the code, and here you go. And again, this is sort of, this is how it uh, shows up on a phone. So it's, it's mobile friendly. And again, all of the learning resources are mobile friendly as well. Or you might be using Google Classroom or Remind or other tools, and you just want to take individual activities within Skillblocks and share those with students. Um, and you can do that by simply clicking on this icon and it copies the URL of that resource. And then you can paste that URL into things like Wakelet or Google Classroom or Remind or WhatsApp. What you need to think about when you're organizing as we just did the resources within a skill blocks uh, or sharing them out individually is how do you want to use them? So FET is these interactives that I think are great things for students to be doing upfront and exploring and playing. And then I also think it's a great tool for actually modeling thinking in a real time environment. And again, not just in our virtual world, if you have a projector, FET is an amazing tool to share with students and to talk through, okay, if I remove um, you know, one of these apples, what is the price going to be? Uh, and then you can do it to actually see it. So it's, it's sort of, it allows for a lot of prediction around what will happen if, and, and then verifying by actually manipulating the tool. Uh, Khan Academy and CK12, which we won't be looking at today, these both, and Math is Fun, all have some video-based instruction. Khan Academy, again, and CK12 have interactive practice, as does Math is Fun. So these are things that students can practice on their own. Um, and then, not in skill blocks, but again, if you have students, excuse me, that are working mainly offline, on the Crowded Learning website, we have um, standards alignments to a website called Common Core Sheets. And within Common Core Sheets, there's over 5,000 standards aligned worksheets that you can print, uh, download and print, and um, make available to students. So there's, 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 all of these things provide sort of different opportunities to learn and practice understanding around whatever concept you want. So it's thinking about how do you want to use them. So we're in Zoom right now and I using, excuse me, um, FET, just so I can model sort of what I think would be a way to use FET in real time. This is what FET looks like 
They have ideas for teachers. They have lesson plans that other folks have uh, put together so that you don't have to sort of recreate the wheel. But we're just going to launch this just so you can see how this simulation works. And a lot of them have various things. One might be an exploration and then a game, but we're going to click on the lab. And so now we're seeing just understanding that if I add one hole, it's two halves. So I can ask, well, what's going to happen if I add another hole over here? What's going to happen? It is four halves. Um, I can increase the number here on the denominator. I can increase the number here by just doing this. Um, we can get into mixed numbers here. So I could say uh, here, uh, I'm going to double the number of thirds pieces that I have. So what will that equal? And how many sixths will that equal? Right? So these are questions you can pose. And in Zoom meeting, actually, I'm, I want to bring this up, not in Zoom webinar, unfortunately, but in Zoom meeting on your icon panel at the bottom, you have the ability to share control of the mouse, which means that you can give students control who are on the Zoom of the mouse, and then they could manipulate it. So I could ask the question, you know, what's going to happen if I double this? And then, you know, you can actually have a student go ahead and do that. And so if I doubled the number up here, so it was two thirds. Well, now it's four thirds. So we can look at, well, we went from two to four up here. So what, what does that give me a sense of in terms of operations with fractions. And then we had, um, before we had four six, and now we had eight six. So the, the, the numerator doubled in both cases, but the denominator stayed the same. Why is that? So FET is a really great tool, again, for um, more conceptual understanding. Um, if you want to use skill blocks as is, as I sort of talked about earlier, one of the things that we know is a use case that teachers, I think, are going to sort of like with skill blocks is that they can indicate the publisher resources and provide these free and open education resources. Um, in terms of using skill blocks as is, a question that keeps coming up is reporting. And when we're talking about reporting within skill blocks, the only tools that provide reporting are Khan Academy, CK12, and uh, Flexbooks, which uh, Flexbooks is more middle school, high school level. Um, so you have to understand that things like math is fun and FET, those do not track student time. And this has been a question that comes up a lot um, when I've been presenting on skill blocks. So with those resources, you need to just make sure that with Khan Academy in particular, that you that students are actually logging in. So if they get that skill lock and they click on that link to Khan Academy, if they're on their phone and their phone um, has the app, they're going to get launched into that activity in Khan Academy in their account. And so they're taken care of. Um, the, the, the thing about Khan Academy is it does not require you to have an account when you go there to actually work in any of the content. So you're just going to want, particularly if like back in a classroom setting where students aren't working maybe at their own computer and therefore it doesn't have their Khan Academy username and password saved, make sure that they're uh, logging into Khan Academy when they go to that particular activity. Uh, the CK12 resources, you can't really access them without um, having an account. And so that, that problem is kind of taken care of. But one of the things that I've been sort of experimenting with with teachers is using something uh, known as student self-reporting. And I've created a Google form and I run a Google Classroom with teachers in a state that I'm working with. And I had them do a math is fun lesson. And at the end of a math is fun lesson, there's 10 questions. And so in Google Classroom, I gave them the link to the math is fun lesson and I gave them the link to the form. And I said, make sure to track your time, complete the lesson, and then take a screenshot of your score at the end and upload it into this form. And what's really cool about that is by doing that, I get this image in, in my Google Drive that shows me how they did. So it's verification of how they performed. Um, but two of the questions that I ask in the form are, how long did it take you to complete this resource? And how would you rate this resource? And so now students are providing that duration of time. And because Google Forms is connected to Google Sheets, it's a spreadsheet. 
So I can literally just highlight the column of their responses to the number of minutes and it gives me an average. So I see for this activity in the, in the video that I have linked here, uh, it's on our website as well. Um, you will see that uh, the average time was like 9.98 minutes. So I know that the activity takes about 10 minutes. And then my, the student rating of the resource, this particular lesson, was 4.8 out of 5. So I learned that, okay, this is a lesson that students liked and I might want to, to do with students. Um, and again, if you, are, if you do have students that don't have access, uh, I encourage you to consider, are there ways that maybe you can get students access to their books and then use skill blocks to help create learning plans, telling them what to work through um, based on these various topics. And for now, that might just be to create print-only plans, but um, in the future, these printouts could be things based on sort of specific concepts that you know you're going to be teaching that week that you just make available to students. And so now they know what lessons in the book align to that skill. They are given the URL and the code for this concept, and they have this printout that can serve as sort of a learning plan for them to be working on their own on different resources. Um, I already showed common course sheets. So now we're gonna hop into using skill blocks with Google Classroom. Uh, most of you are familiar with Google Classroom. Uh, it's a great tool for managing and it sort of is all in one because you can create assignments, you can score assignments, you can communicate through Google Classroom. So I never used Google Classroom until the start of this whole thing. And now I'm managing most of my professional development in it because I think it's just a great tool for doing that and it allows me to model uh, here's how you create an assignment and it allows teachers to see, oh, this is what it's like from a student perspective. All of these resources, which are in skill blocks, have the ability to assign directly through um, Google Classroom. So when I went to that fractions equality simulation, you'll see there's a Google Classroom icon right here. So all I have to do is click on that and now I can assign it to whichever class I want. And I want to create an assignment with this, and so I just click go, <clears throat> and, um, and I'm going to show you the sort of start to finish process on these three tools, just so you see sort of what it entails. Um, explore this before Wednesday's class. you know if you wanted to do that and you can select the specific students that you want you can create a due date um, so I'm gonna say our next class is Wednesday and I click assign and now this the link to this FET and the directions that I've created for it are have been launched and my students are getting an assignment for this specific resource within this skill block um, I could also go to Google Classroom and say hey here's the code um, for this skill block that I want you to work on. And then, you know, they have that. So how you sort of, how granular you get in terms of your assignment level um, is going to be up to you. But that's, you know, that's Google Classroom in, in a nutshell in terms of creating assignments. I'll actually go to Google Classroom just so you see it from um, going into it and actually um, creating one. So I have, multiple Google Classroom accounts. Um, I'm just gonna use the one that I just did. So if I go in here now and I go to my classwork, um, we will see that I, I've i created a number of these uh, equivalent fractions things, but I could create a new assignment uh, manually in here and I could call it um, interactive um, equivalent fractions. Um, explore the sim this um, tool, find pairs of equivalent fractions. And I'm gonna add a link and I'll go back to my skill block and I want them to use this um, interactive number line. Now again, this little icon, when I click on it, it copies that URL to the clipboard. And now I just paste that in. And now they see that. And again, I could create a due date if I wanted to. And I click assign. And I have created an assignment with directions on how to use this specific tool. So, you know, that is, and maybe you are providing them access to the skill block just at large. 
but you're going to be sending out specific assignments using the ones that you know you, you want students to definitely be doing and providing some instructions around it. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is Wakelet, and I'm going to close uh, some of these folks so that um, we don't, uh, I'm going to have a lot of tabs open in a second. So Wakelet is a tool, if you download it, or excuse me, if you grab the link at the start of the session where I have this Wakelet that has all of these math resources, it's a content curation tool, and it actually wasn't designed for education. It was it's literally built to be a, hey, um, you know, I'm going to create a collection of uh, the websites of the places that we want to go on our summer trip. Uh, or I've got a wakelet on winter recipes. Like I find, you know, winter recipes and I just add them to my wakelet. So now I've got this one place where they all exist. Um, but teachers started, you know, seeing wakelet and started getting creative with how to use it. And now education is the number one sort of space in which wakelet is being used. I've gone in and created, um, you know, Wakelet lessons. So I'm going to show you how to do that using skill block. <coughs> Excuse me, skill blocks. Um, so Wakelet is free and all of these resources, as with anything that Crowded Learning does, um, are free. You'll see I've got one that I've already created and I'm leaving it in here because um, it has its own unique uh, code and I want to make sure that the folks who are on Tuesday's webinar don't lose access to that. So when you do Wakelet, basically you get this. I'm gonna, you can add a cup, your own image, or they have a great library. So um, pizza is always a great tool for teaching fractions. So I'm gonna select that one. And now that gets added, and I'm gonna just make it uh, smaller. And I'm gonna call this equivalent fractions. Um, And I could write a description here. I, on the ones that I've created that are lessons, I sort of put an intro to the concepts, right? So um, look at the pizza. How many slices are there? How many pizzas are there? How many slices are there? And maybe some sort of prompt that's literally just using the image, right? Um, but so now I've got this wakelet that I've created. And there's nothing in it other than this title. So I'm going to edit this collection and I want to add resources into it. So you can do that manually. And I'm going to go from the bottom to the top just because I'm going to show you some tools that they have that make it really easy um, to move things into your Wakelet. So you copy the URL as I just did. And then I just click on this and I paste the URL. And immediately that Khan Academy resource is here and it has the description. So it's actually pulling from the description that's on the website. So I could one by one copy these in um, and paste them in like this. But Wakelet also has a cool plugin um, that allows me to, I could launch this and I'm gonna launch this one as well. Um, and when I, and I'm gonna save this, I wanna make sure I do that. Um, when I've got these open in these different tabs, so it's like, okay, I'm exploring this. I like this activity. I want this to be in the wakelet. All I need to do is click on this wakelet icon and it's going to ask me what wakelet do I want to save this page to. And so it's got, you know, instructions in here that I could edit. And and then I just say, I want to, this is the one that I just created. I'm going to click save. And now that activity has been added to the wakelet. If I go, okay, I like this one. It's a little different. I'm going to add this one to the wakelet. Um, and I just select the one that I want it to save to. And now those have been added in as well. And the reason I'm working from the bottom of my skill block to the top uh, is, now you're not going to see it here because I need to refresh my page um, is because Wakelet will put new resources that you've added on top. So now suddenly I've got four resources in here. I've got those two practice. I've got two of those games. Um, another tool that Wakelet has within their plugin is the ability to uh, enable this extension. So I'm going to just very quickly add, uh, open up the rest of the resources that are in this skill block. 
Um, and so say you w went and looked at all of these different resources and you're like, good, I like them. With this Wakelet extension, um, what happens is when I add a new page, it's gonna show me all of my open tabs here. And all I have to do is drag them into the Wakelet and those are now added into this collection as well. So I'm gonna click on view collection. I'm gonna close out these old ones. And so now I have uh, six resources or maybe even more that I've put in here. And remember we were looking, we've got, uh, oh, I'm not done yet. So we've got the lessons, we've got the games, we've got the practice sets. I wanna add those simulations as well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just do the manual form. I'm gonna copy this, close. I'm gonna go to my Wakelet. I am going to edit and add. Paste. And I think I added an extra space and that's why I didn't recognize it right away. Oops. There we go. I accidentally typed. I'm gonna add uh, the FET that is copied. I go to my Wakelet, I paste. And I, I, a lot of times it'll actually you know, show something related to um, a graphic from the website that you just copy pasted into your Wakelet. Looks like I'm having some bandwidth issues right now. So give that a second. As that's saving, um, and hopefully it saves, uh, again, you know, we organize this skill block into explorations and into um, lessons and then into games and then into practice. So I can add just text in here with directions for my students. So I'm gonna call this explore and then provide directions, save. And so now they're gonna see that these are my little explorations. These are lessons, so I'm gonna call this learn. Maybe you're giving a bunch of lessons and you say do at least one of these lessons. And uh, you know, if you need more help, uh, if you need to do more lessons, go ahead. And then the Khan Academy, oh, these are the games, sorry. So um, we're gonna do play, we call it, so play. and then practice, um, just add text. And I am done. Now, obviously, again, you'd put more detail in here, but I'm going to uh, save this and now I'm going to change my sharing, um, which means changing visibility. I'm going to make this public. And now in the chat, I am going to uh, share this with you. Now, Wakelets are cool because they integrate with lots of different tools. So I could share this out in Remind, and you may be familiar with Remind. Um, it looks like a lot of you were because I think 67% of you said you use Remind. So it will just make you log into your Remind account and then this Wakelet is going to be sort of in the chat and you can select who you want to send it to. You could provide additional directions uh, if you want and then you just send it. And so now you've created a Wakelet and you've shared that out with your students using Remind. I am going to copy the URL and paste it into the chat because now you have access to this Wakelet. And uh, what's great about Wakelet is you have the ability to make a copy of this and then adjust it however you want. Um, so you could, like lots of teachers put Wakelets up here, you could find things, but again, you could just create your own Wakelet that provides a little bit more instructions for students, um, you know, within the various resources that you pulled from um, skill blocks. So the last tool we're going to look at and Padlet is Padlet, excuse me. And this is obviously going to be very quick because we're about three minutes to the hour. Um, but Padlet is a great tool for uh, collaboration. And so I think it's a great tool both for creating experiences for students to do before class and then to use as the sort of springboard board for conversation during class. So I'm going to make a new Padlet. It's free. You get up to three, sorry. 
Um, you get up to three free ones, uh, and then you have to pay. But you don't, you don't have to pay because I just archive ones that I'm not using. So if I'm for my real time lessons, once I'm done with it, I just archive it, and so then I just have access to it any time. So it's really you have access to three live Padlets at any time. But I'm going to make a very quick Padlet um, using one. They have lots of different formats for things that you can do with it. But I'm going to call this equivalent fractions. And I just edit that here. And you know you can basically set your wallpaper. You can you can do all sorts of things. But I'm just going to you may keep it very simple here. So equivalent fractions. I'm going to provide directions. Um, oh, I think this is the name. So yeah, these are the directions. And then I'm going to add. A, so you add these tiles and columns, right? With with Padlet in this view. So I'm going to take my skill lock and that interactive fraction number line that I really liked. I'm going to click. Uh, copy it and then I'm going to paste it into here um, but I'm going to say um, find equivalent fractions use this tool to um, uh, explore um, different pairs of equivalent fraction in each column Um, share an equivalent fraction you found. If I can type, I really can. Equi equivalent <laughs> fraction you found. Um, and so now I, I've created directions for the students and I can paste in this URL. And so now there's a link to this number line. So I could add columns to this. So I'm going to call this column three ninths. I'm going to call this column two eighths. And I'm going to call this column four sixths, and I'm going to ask the students to, um, you know, find number line uh, equivalent fractions to those, and to add their equivalent fractions in the space below. And I'm going to make a bonus um, uh, loan man out. Tell me a fraction that doesn't have any equivalent fractions on the number line. And now that's that. And so now I've created this interactive board that I can use with students in real time, or I could say, hey, I want you to use this board uh, to complete the activity. And then when we get together, we're gonna look at your answers and I'm gonna ask you to share your thinking. Um, so to share this, you just can copy the clipboard. You can, you can do all sorts of things. It also can be shared in Google Classroom. Um, I'm gonna copy the link to the clipboard and I'm gonna put it in the chat and what you're gonna see now is you have access to this Padlet, and then you have the ability to click on these and to add your answers. So again, this is a single resource from that skill block on equivalent fractions. Students can explore, if they don't have any concepts of equivalent fractions, they're gonna see it on that number line and then people can add their answers. So I see, thank you, so whoever's just added one third. So that's three ninths in simplest forms. Um, and I think there's another uh, uh, equivalent fraction to three ninths in there um, uh, within the, uh, excuse me, the, um, the interactive number line. So there's gonna be multiple answers that students share in here. And then you can use this as a collaborative sounding board. I see one question. Um, I, this was at a, this was just now. So in terms of in any of these things, like if you're doing a Zoom and you're doing real class time, you have a log of, of time. The question was, is there a way to track time? And again, there's only certain resources within skill blocks that do track time. You're using something like this uh, in, a, in, a, in a Zoom setting, then obviously you're documenting that that's student time learning. If you're asking them to do this on their own, um, you know, maybe you, you set a time that you want them to spend on it and just, you know, it's called teacher verification um, of the time. Thanks for whoever's like being the little fraction whiz today. Um, teacher verification is a model that allows for teachers to sort of determine this is how much time this activity will take. 
Um, that Google form that I showed you earlier is something that I think if you gave every student the same activity like this and had them document their time, then you could round out that average and say, you know, the assumption is this, how, this is how long this activity takes. But that is a state level decision that you'll need to check um, with um, your state in terms of what's allowable. I know there's more flexibility that is happening at the moment because of the fact that we're in this strange setting. Um, so that's Padlet, and I, I'm going to stop there and just give some um, heads up in terms of what's coming next in, in terms of taking these things now that we've sort of shared up to this point and then moving forward. So next week is going to be actually 75 minutes, and there's a Tuesday and a Thursday, and we're going to actually be looking at blended learning strategies. So thinking about, okay, that Padlet is a great thing that we can be doing in real time, but guess what? real time virtually and also real time in the classroom because Padlet's very mobile friendly. And so students could be on their phone answering those questions or contributing to that board um, in class using their, the, the devices that they have access to. So we're gonna be thinking about if I had that Padlet, if I have those math games, if I have these Khan Academy practice sets, if I have these lessons, and those might be print lessons and or um, online lessons, how am I segmenting those out around a concept and creating sort of a rich experience that allows learners to learn in different ways, to be collaborating, to be communicating, um, and to be sharing, doing different activities at different points in times around a concept. And that's called blended learning. And so next week, we're going to be looking at basically, again, we're just sort of we're adding on sort of to our knowledge base, right? So how to use skill blocks, how to look at the resources, how to organize resources how to create sort of better activities using those resources. And next week, it's how to sort of pull those things together um, so that you're providing lots of great options for learners around a topic. I see a question. Oh, someone's just saying farewell. Um, and in that, we're gonna really look at all of these tools and think about, again, I don't know how long we're gonna be in this setting, right? So. Um, if you haven't established sort of the sequence, what are the tools that you can use to like Wakelet or just skill blocks as is to say, here's the things I want you to work on today. How are you going to communicate those? When are you going to have real time lessons and use tools that are really built to, you know, provide really rich lessons. And again, you do that with zoom. Um, how will you manage daily assignments and check ins So things like math is fun, CK 12 and con. These are all things that students can really do on their own with some guidance in terms of what they should be working on. And so how are you sort of letting students know what they should be working on and checking in with them? And then, you know, how could you use tools and build activities, say in Google Classroom, to provide an end of week review where you're going to discuss the things that you learned in Zoom, you're going to provide some sort of exit ticket within Google Classroom um, that sort of helps them sort of document and reflect on whatever they learned during the course of the week. You know, we're all going to be working in different sort of um, sequences and schedules, but you know, you're learning about all of these new tools. And if we're for as long as we're going to be virtual, we might as well be making the most of them and, and being sort of practical and realistic in terms of how we use them together. Um, but again, think about all of the things you just showed, uh, saw today. These are things that you definitely can use when you're back in the classroom. So think about tools that. Um, not just are going to be ones that you want to use right now, but are ones that you, you think are going to help you be even more effective in the future when we get back to class. I want to mention, and I've done this at any of my webinars, tomorrow and every Friday, there are distance learning strategy sessions being run by the Ed Tech Center. Tomorrow's might be of particular interest um, because they do lightning talks. So there'll be two lightning talks um, that are 10 to 15 minutes, and then we break out into sessions based on the topic that you want to talk about. One of the topics tomorrow is on taking your face-to-face -face instruction and moving it online. So looking at what does a virtual, like actual real-time instruction look like and strategies for doing so. And we have a recognized expert in the field um, who will be leading both the, the lightning talk and then the discussion that takes place afterwards. So uh, that's a great thing to attend if you can. Um, but for this point, do, do, do. Someone's asking they cannot find a skill block app. There is not a skill block app. We have not built an app. Um, we only have the website. 
And again, it presents really well on a mobile device, uh, particularly for students. I will say, you will not use skill blocks at the moment you, uh, on your phone to create skill blocks. So teacher side, you definitely need to be on a computer. Student side, however, uh, it's very mobile friendly. So they do not need a, um, they don't need, excuse me, an app in order to operate it. <clears throat> the one thing that I would share with you, um, and maybe I'll send this in the follow-up, is one of the things that I've told folks to do is if students go to the skill block login page, any phone, uh, Android or uh, an iPhone, you have the ability to add that URL to your home screen. And so basically, um, you know, and even something like Read Theory, which is that website that I shared that allows students to sort of work at their own level in reading. When you get learners to those websites, get them there on their phones and then uh, help them understand how to add that icon to their home screen, because then instead of having to go to that URL, it's going to be an icon on their home screen that looks like an app, and they click on it, it's just gonna launch that web page. Um, so that would be my recommendation for students, and thanks for bringing that up. I've not even shared that in any of these webinars, so I will, I will do that probably as a video tutorial on, um, on the YouTube channel. So. Uh, are there any other questions? I know we are over time, and I thank you for taking the time today. Um, feel free to add them into the chat or the q and A. I'm looking right now. I have to get out of uh, screen. I think just that logging of hours was the only question. Okay, so that's it for today. Uh, I hope you learned about some new tools that you might be interested in using. I hope you learn more about skill blocks and just how you can integrate it into whatever you're doing both now and in the future. And thank you as always for everything you are doing. We are all under very strange circumstances right now. And I am inspired each and every week with each and every teacher that I talk to in terms of how they are continuing learning for their learners. So thank you. Have a great day.